What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. Uh, my name is Greg Wave. I'm your host for the day. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. We got a lot more content coming for it, and we love hearing all the feedback you guys are giving. It's just incredible. So today I'm going to talk about why I drive part time. Um, <laughs> Some of you guys probably know why I drive part-time, but for those of you who don't, here's why. There is, it, it's it's not there full-time. It's just not there. I've listed this example in other videos before that if you're driving full-time, you're probably going to put close to, if not, 100,000 miles on your car in a year. I, I know a guy that does pretty much 80,000 regularly each year. That is absurd. That is like crazy. Um, the reason why is you'll drive for like one or two years and let's say you're financing your car, okay? So now you've got close to or anywhere from 150 to 200,000 miles on your car after two years of Uber and Lyft driving. You still owe, let's say, $8,000 on it Maybe you bought it at 11 grand, you know, whatever it is. You still owe eight grand on it. You still owe six, seven grand on it, whatever it is. You still owe a lot of money on it. And you also have, you know, you have to put some money in repairs to it because you've been driving the hell out of it. Okay. Your cars aren't just going to stay pristine doing this. Like you're going to have problems. Um, so now you're in this little dilemma where you have a vehicle that's at the point to where it almost can't be driven anymore. I mean, a 200,000 mile car is getting to the point where it, you really can't use it too much unless you know you have some freakishly long lasting car. Um, and so, you know, that leaves like a really, really big dilemma of like what you're gonna do. Now you're in this hole where you don't even really have a vehicle that you can use. You also owe money on it and you need repairs on it and you still wanna go out there and make money on Uber and Lyft. Well, how are you gonna do it? And so maybe it's not two years, but what if, it, but in three, I can't imagine after three years, you would still have a car that you could really effectively run on it. Um, <clears throat> so that to me has always been the main reason is that is yeah, that you're, you're just destroying your vehicle in the process and then thinking you're making this great full-time income and you're really not the money when it first came out was probably there to where it actually did make sense. It's not here now. So to me, it, it's just a part-time income because I only look at it as extra money. I only look at it as this is just helping me out. This is just savings. This is just this. And I'm doing minimal miles on my car. I mean, like I said, you guys have heard in my other videos on the weekdays, I'm just doing airport rides, which is a lot of time just sitting in the queue. And then I'm doing 20 to you know, 15 to 20 mile rides on those. So I'm doing maybe a hundred miles a day, maybe, you know, maybe sometimes a little bit more for how much I drive though. I don't drive a whole lot anymore, but I used to drive a lot. So here's, here's what happened. Like with, with me, when I was full-time driving, I wasn't, okay. So I had one year where I averaged 35 hours a week on, on Lyft and Uber, 70,000 miles. And that's, that's no BS, 70,000 miles for 35 hours a week. So imagine if you're doing 40 to 45, Matt, there's some guys I've heard that do 50, you know, they're probably touching a hundred thousand miles. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, the second biggest reason why I believe that full-time driving isn't there is that Uber and Lyft, you know, most people believe they're headed towards automation robot drivers. So They've already tested the markets for it. Uh, there was probably a year ago, I think they were doing it here. They had, you know, automated drivers for Lyft and, uh, or maybe it was just Uber. And so eventually this just won't be a thing. And that's like a reality we have to all accept is that probably within five years, none of us will be doing this anymore at all. It's more than likely where it's headed. That being the case, you shouldn't build your future around this. You know, you shouldn't build your life around this. You shouldn't structure anything around this. The other reason, it's really unpredictable. Um, one week you might make $1,200. One week you might make $700. It's so unpredictable how often you can make. I've never really been able to be like consistently doing the same number each week. 
And again, this is for my market, other markets, maybe you do. Um, <clears throat> so why that could be tricky is if you're living your life and you're trying to pay your bills and you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do a full-time Uber driving because I did it for one week and I made $1,100. So as long as I do that each week, I'll be good, right? Yeah, and then you have a week where you don't do it. Now what happens? You're putting off bills or this or that and or maybe you have to work an extra 10 hours on Sunday rather than taking the day off. It just ends up being really complicated. And uh, when I did full-time driving, I was just extremely stressed out. I had weeks, I've done a 72 hour week. I've done, I think I did more than that once. I'll check to see if I ever did, but I was doing crazy amounts of driving because I had to make ends meet. So the money isn't there. The long term isn't there. It's going to kill your vehicle. So that's not there. Long story short, it's not worth it. Stick to part time driving. That is the way to go. Make that extra money, cover some utilities. Don't stress out. You know, it's the way to go, guys. So that is why I'm a part time driver, y'all. Um, keep doing good out there, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to hit me up on social media or anything else. I'd love to talk to you guys. Have a great rest of your day, make some killer tips, and I will see you guys soon.